Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Do just as God says. We're reading from 2 Kings 5 and verse 14, which says, So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. This is a story of an athlete who was not happy with his progress in his sport, and so he found a coach with the most unorthodox methods. The coaching sessions started off with talks about different things unrelated to the sport. The coach would spend sessions talking about stuff and doing unrelated things. The athlete grew more and more uncomfortable, and one day he confronted the coach. When are we going to start doing things to make me into a better athlete? The coach calmly said, We started the first day you came to see me. The athlete said, we have been meeting for several weeks and we have not gone out on the field. We haven't done any gym work. We've just been doing all these weird talks and activities that have nothing to do with me being an athlete. I think you're wasting my time and my money. The coach shrugged his shoulder and said to the young man, You came to me to make you into a better athlete. I took your request seriously and started to work right away. But if you're not satisfied, then you can end our relationship. The young athlete went home that evening confused and took a few sessions off to process things. Then later he came back and said to the coach, I will do as you tell me. I realize I have to trust you to get me to where I want to go. That was the turning point. The young man went on to become successful in the game. The coach had done his job. What is it that you need from God? A healing miracle? A financial miracle? A spouse? A job that pays well? You know what you need most. I'm going to guess that you have tried many different suggestions or recommendations, but things have not changed and your need is even greater. Today, let us look at a man, a successful professional, who had a great need that threatened his career and his very life, until one day he heard the most unlikely suggestion from a most unlikely source, and he gave it a try. Naaman, a non-Jewish man, was an outstanding career military officer. He had leprosy, a debilitating and incurable disease that leads to isolation and eventually death. Naaman had a Jewish servant girl working in his home who told his wife about a prophet in her country who could cure him of his disease. A prophet? This is a health issue. A prophet? But Naaman was willing to give it a try, and so he went to his boss, the king of his country. He got the blessing of the king who chose to go through diplomatic channels and sent an official letter to the Jewish king. The king of Israel was not amused and thought this other king was fixing for a fight. That was when the prophet Elisha heard about the case and sent for Naaman to come see him. He sent his servant out to tell Naaman to go dip in the river Jordan seven times and he would be cured. What? Who does this guy think I am to send me to bathe in the murky Jordan River? I could have done that in my country, and, 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 and he was livid until his servants spoke some sense into his head. Boss, if the prophet had told you to do some mighty things, you would have done it, but you scoff at his suggestion? Just do as the prophet says. Naaman followed their line of reasoning, and he humbly went down to the river Jordan. The Bible says that the great military officer went into the river and washed himself seven times as the man of God had told him. Guess what? His flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Don't you love a good story with a happy ending? Leprosy was incurable, but Naaman took the advice of the prophet, the man of God, and although at first he thought it was an insult to his country, he eventually listened to the voice of reasoning and he was cured. His reason for coming to Israel was realized. The Jewish servant girl who worked in his home was right after all. 
God has the most creative, the most unorthodox method to answer your prayers, to grant you the desires of your heart. Let us find the secret. Remember the athlete in the story at the beginning of this message? The athlete came to the coach, but he was dissatisfied with what the coach was doing. Naaman came to see the prophet who told him to do something weird, something he thought was not appropriate given his status in his society. Both the athlete and Naaman had to think again. The secret is in the think again moment. The secret to both stories was stepping back and having that serious assessment. I have a need. This person who has a reputation of fixing things has made a suggestion and I dare to question what he recommends. What is it that I need? Who is this person? The missing element is trust. The athlete had to get to the place where he trusted the coach and stop focusing on the method of coaching. The athlete had to wipe the slate clean and trust this man. Naaman had to pay less attention to the river and trust the prophet. When you come to God with your problem, God requires full and total trust in him. You cannot be in doubt of God's ability. Rather, do as Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Success, blessing, the miracle will come when you trust God totally. Please share your thoughts or questions about today's message with me at friendofclyde@gmail.com. at gmail.com.